Well, Collins? I've got to have a little more time, Benson, till tomorrow. That's what you said yesterday. So today's tomorrow. I'm in the habit of doing business with bookies that pay off, Collins. And you're not breaking that habit now. Look, Benson. Look, nothing. The only thing I want to see is that 3,000 bucks I got coming. But I haven't got it. Then I'm going to remind you to get it. This will get you your money. <laughs> Maybe not. But I need the exercise anyhow. No! You don't get your money. When? Chandler suspected a bookie was operating right in his factory here. Why didn't he contact me instead of sending you all the way from Coronado? Well, frankly, he said he didn't think you'd do anything about it. Well, just what does he expect you to do about it? I've done all I can. I know who the bookie is. Young fellow by the name of Collins. Works in personnel. I could have told Mr. Chandler that for the price of a postage stamp. Could you have told him that Collins is working for a man named Sam Beale? Well, for being in town just a couple of days, Mr. Adams, you've found out quite a lot, haven't you? No trick at all. No, it isn't. Not here in Brookwood. You see, next to the Chandler Manufacturing Company, Sam Beale's gambling operations are just about our biggest business. A lot of people think I'm on Sam Beale's payroll. I can't say that I blame them. What they forget is knowing about Sam Beale and proving something against him are two different things. Haven't you been able to get anything on him? Well, I got something on him once, about a year ago, when I knocked over a crap game he was operating. So what happened? He came to trial, and 12 good men and true acquitted him. A couple of hours later, half of them were over in Sam Beale's joint, placing their bets on the first race at the Meadows. I got these dice in that raid. I keep them to remind me of the odds against anybody beating Sam Beale. And? That's the situation. I'll explain it to Chandler when he gets here. Chandler's coming here at Rookwood? I wired him to come. He'll be in sometime tonight. Oh, I don't get it. Chandler's a very busy man. He's got factories all over the country. Thousands of employees. Why is he so interested in this fellow Collins? Because Collins' real name isn't Collins. It's Chandler. Chandler? Yes, he's Warren Chandler's son. We had a date for lunch. I'm sorry, Kay, I forgot. What's the matter with you? I had trouble, baby. Doesn't everybody? Not my kind. Kay, could you raise $3,000 for me? Three thought. Now, honey, I know I put on a little weight lately. But I didn't think I resemble the Bank of England. I'm not kidding. No, you're not, are you? Well, in that case... Where are you going? Gil, honey, if you haven't suspected it by this time, let me be the first to tell you. I'm strictly a fair-weather friend. Okay, you've got to help me. That 3000 I owe Sam Beale. Sam Beale? Nobody owes Sam Beale a dime, not if Sam knows it. He doesn't. That's the neatest trick of the year, and how did you manage that? I've been booking some bets myself on the side without Beale knowing it. 
Oh, brother. It worked okay until the other day when a guy named Benson made a heavy bet on a long shot. And he hit. And you couldn't pay off. No part of it. I tried to stall him, but he came in here a little while ago and started pushing me around. It was either pay up or take a beating. So I used Sam's money. The weekly take I'm supposed to turn over to him tomorrow. Goodbye, Gil. Get your hooks off me. I want no part of this problem. Could be contagious. I've spit on you. You're breaking my heart. Get out of here. I'll get you for this, you punk. Hello? No, this is Truck Quill. Who's calling? Hold on. It's that dame that's been running around with Gil Collins. Kay Scott says she has some information you should have. This is Sam Bale. Uh-huh. Tonight. Well, I left as soon as I got your telegram. I used a company plane. What have you found out? I think you know the answer to that. So it is Gil. You suspected it, didn't you? Why didn't you tell me when you asked me to come here? We can't talk here. Let's go up to my room. There was nothing new about the story Warren Chandler told me. Only the names were different. Gil Chandler had been a king-sized headache to his father since he was a child. He'd apparently learned to lie almost before he'd learned to talk, and had gone on from there to develop a real talent as a thief and a cheat. He'd never been out of one scrape longer than it had taken him to get into another. I don't know how many times Gil broke his mother's heart, but enough to finally kill her. This was his last chance, Adams. I told Gil that if he couldn't get himself straightened out here in Brookwood under an assumed name, I was through. But you didn't mean it. You want to give him one more last chance? No, I'm not so sure. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. I suppose you're right. What can I do, Adams? Well, I'm a private investigator, Mr. Chandler, not a family relations counselor. Whatever happens now is up to you and the police. The police? I talked to Chief of Police Pate. I ask you to keep this investigation confidential. Well, you asked me, but I didn't promise. Your son's been breaking the law, Mr. Chandler. It's my duty to inform the police. Unfortunately, they apparently can't do much about it. As Pate says, there's a big difference between knowing and proving. But that's Pate's worry and yours. If you'll excuse me, I want to make a plane reservation to get out of here in the morning. Make yourself comfortable. Collins. What are you doing here? Sam sent me to collect the dough for last week. You're a little early, aren't you? The way Kay Scott tells it, I'm a little late. Well, you're sure he's not trying to string us, Truck. It's the real good, Sam. He really is Warren Chandler's kid. That's a switch, huh? That's quite a switch. In that case, here's what you tell him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I got it. Sam's giving you a break, kid. Seeing as who you are and assuming you can make your old man pop for the money you owe. I can't trip. Okay. The way Sam figures, what with the 3,000 you gave that guy Benson, and the money in bet you pocketed, you owe him 5000 It wasn't that much. You want to argue about it? Okay. 
You got exactly 48 hours to ask your old man to cough up. Any questions? Good boy. <laughs> So I told Chuck who I am. You get the five thousand dollars from me. You're rotten, Bill. You're rotten clean through. I thought at least you'd have some loyalty to your so-called friends, whatever they were. But you don't even have that redeeming feature. Oh, spare me the lecture. Do you think it's easy for me to ask you? Yes, sir. You wouldn't be asking. You've never done anything hard in your life. Do I get the money or don't I? I'll think about it. I want to know now. You have 48 hours. Oh, you're going to make me sweat, is that the idea? Is he going to give me the money or isn't he? Will he or won't he? Well, I'm not going to sweat. I'm going to know right now. How? You want to beat an answer out of me? You could. You're a big boy now. And when you've done that, you'll have done everything to me you possibly could do. I lost my head, I'm sorry. You're a liar. You don't know the meaning of the word. Mr. Chandler. My name's Quill, Mr. Chandler. Maybe Gil mentioned me? He mentioned you. You can tell Sam Beale he'll get his money. When? The banks are still open. Why not wind us up right away? I have a reason for wanting to wait. What would happen to my son if Sam Beale didn't get his money? Beale couldn't let a thing like that slide. He'd be robbed blind if he did. That doesn't answer my question. Your kid could have a pretty bad accident. Would you kill him? Why are you asking all these questions? I'm trying to find out what would happen to Gil if somebody wanted him hurt. Just badly enough, but not too badly. How bad is that? Enough to teach him a lesson he'd never forget. You know anybody in particular who'd want a thing like that to happen? And who'd be willing to pay for it. In addition to the money owing Sam Beale. Well, like I said, Mr. Chandler, the banks are still open. I have a car waiting outside. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Adams, but I'm looking for Warren Chandler. He's not in his room, and I thought maybe you'd know where I could find him. I haven't seen him since this afternoon. What do you want him for? I've got some bad news for him. His son's dead. He's what? His body was found in an alley back at the Chandler plant about an hour ago. How'd he die? He was beaten to death. <laughs> What are you doing here? You killed my son, you filthy murderer! All right. Where's Sam Beal? He's spending the night over in Junction City. As long as you're here, Chandler, we'd better have a talk about the facts of life. Why did you do it, Quill? Why did you kill my son? I didn't say I did. And that's only half the story. You're not going to say it either. Not to the police, not to anybody. And I'm going to tell you why you're not. When Chief Pate left to go to his office after telling me of Gil Chandler's murder, I dressed to go looking for Warren Chandler. I didn't have far to look.
I was just going out to find you. You know about Gil? Yes, Chief Pate was here. Have you seen him? And how'd you find out about Gil? I was down at the factory. I heard the police cars and the ambulance in the alley, and I... Well, if you knew it was Gil, why didn't... I don't want to talk about it now. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to talk about it now, either to me or to Chief Pate. It won't do any good, Adams. When I found out it was Gil in the alley and that he was dead, I just didn't want to stay there. Why not? Do you know why your son was killed, Chandler? No. You're lying. You might as well waste Chief Pate's time as mine. Adams, wait. Well, what is it? I didn't intend for anything like this to happen. I told that man Quill. Quill? Truck Quill. He works for Sam B. I know. What about him? I hired him to give Gil a beating. You did what? Gil was cheating Sam Beal, and Beal found out about it. He gave him 48 hours to repay the money, $5,000 or else. Gil told me when I saw him in the afternoon, he asked me for the money. And you turned him down? No, I told him I'd think about it. I just said that to worry him. I intended to pay the money. I did pay it. Cor was waiting for me when I came out of Gil's office. We went to the bank. I gave him $7,000, five for Beale and two to Quill to teach my son a lesson. I know what you think. I was at my wit's end with Gil. I thought if just once something could happen to frighten him enough... Let's go down and talk to Chief Payton. Oh. Now listen, Chandler. There's nothing to talk about. I, I just came from seeing Quill. He told me he'd deny everything. Well, I imagine he would. There's no evidence, don't you see? He can say that he didn't know Gil was my son, and he didn't, not until Gil told him this afternoon. He can say he didn't take any money from me, and it'll just be my word against his. That's really not what's bothering you, Chandler. You're thinking of yourself. And what it would mean to admit that you hired a thug to beat your own son to death. I didn't. I just wanted... The boy's to... dead. Nothing can change the fact that you're morally responsible for his death. Help me, Adams. How? I can't face the police. What, you want me to keep quiet about this? If it would help Gil for me to say... So. Don't give me that line, Chandler. What you'd do if the boy was still alive doesn't interest anybody. It's what you're going to do now that he's dead that counts. I won't go to the police. And they'll just have to come to you. I won't talk to them, Adams. I won't tell them a thing. You know, Chandler may have a point there. It would be just his word against Truck Quills. How long are you going to use these as an excuse for the Sam Beals and Truck Quills to get away with murder in this town? They never got away with murder. Not in Brookwood. I wish Sam Beal to try, but he won't. He's too smart. He knows that murder isn't good for his kind of business. Now, if somebody has to be taken care of, it isn't done here. He hits them someplace else. Until tonight. Yeah. Has to be a first time for everything. Are you just going to let it go at that? What do you want me to do? Drag Quill in here for questioning? Sure, I could do that. But if Warren Chandler won't testify against him, how far would I get? Why, a first-year law student would have Quill out of here in five minutes. All right, it's your job. You do it or don't do it. It's up to you. Just tell me one thing. How can I get in touch with Sam Beal? Why? Just give me the information, huh? Uh, he's got a house just outside of town at the end of Forest Road. But he's over in Junction City tonight. I checked. Uh, just routine. Well, can I contact him in Junction City? Well, he keeps a private suite at the Junction City Lodge. It's the number of his private line. You know a lot about Beal, don't you? I figure it might come in handy someday. Better get back to work. Truck Quill? Who's asking? Name's Adams, Dan Adams. I'm a private investigator. I've been working for Warren Chandler. What am I supposed to do? Salute? Whatever you want, Adams. I don't have any. I'll be so sure. Get out! Chandler told me about the deal you had with him. What deal? What are you gabbing about? Relax, truck. You don't have to go through your act with me. Like you told Chandler, nobody can prove you killed the kid. Chandler agrees. So does Chief Pate. So you're pretty much in the clear as far as the law is concerned. Of course, there's another kind of law. 
kind that's not so fussy about trials and jurors for their man's proved guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Kind of law guys like you and Sam Beal live by. What are you talking about? The law Sam Beal uses against double crossers. Get out of here! I'm trying to do you a favor, Truck. Thanks a lot. I'm giving you a chance to turn yourself over to the police before I turn you over to Beal. You turn me over? For double crossing him by killing Gil Chandler and then pocketing that 5,000 Chandler gave you to pay off the kid's debt. From what I hear of Beal, he's not going to take kindly to you stealing from him. <laughs> But it isn't true. It's not the way it sounds. I can explain the way it is. I can explain. Is that your car outside? Then use it. Sam, listen. Give me a break. I can explain. Adams, tell him you lied. Tell him. You had your chance, truck. Don't go, Adams. Adams, don't go. Ah! Oh, Adam? I was hoping I'd catch you before you left town. How are you feeling? All right, except for a few yards of tape. What's on your mind, Chief? Well, there's a rumor going around town that Truck Quill isn't working for Sam Beale anymore. In fact, I hear the truck isn't working for anybody and won't be again. So? I just thought you'd like to know. Thanks. I figure I might as well forget that story that Warren Chandler told you. You suit yourself. See, the law can't do anything to Chandler that he isn't going to do to himself. I guess not. See you around, Chief. Oh, one thing more, Adams. I thought maybe you'd like to have a little souvenir of Brookwood. I uh, won't be needing these anymore. <laughs> like Sam Beale's odds have changed. I'm glad, Chief. It's about time. Mm -hmm. 